Look out! The captain's away! The Rugby League Hour. Brought to you by Microbio Solutions Limited. Makers of Effluix. The new way to clean up dairy effluent and wastewater while increasing the fertiliser value of your irrigation in one easy step. Visit microbio.co.nz for more. Strong, powerful try! Well, welcome to it, people. The Rugby League Hour, episode six, courtesy of Microbio Solutions. My name is Martin Devlin. And I'm Tony Kemp. This is how it rolls in the next 60 minutes or so. We have six quick questions to start with. We review the round, round six of the NRL. Up the Waz, our legend today joining us is none other than Maddie Johns. The Effluix Cleanup Award, TK's top five. We go head to head. And also, Tony going to put a little punt on for the weekend for us. The way it went... Knights losing at home to the Roosters. 22 20. How they, how they get that, the Knights? How they get? How they not get it? Storm, Bulldogs, Storm doing it late like they did against the Warriors. They, mate, sitting up the top two, the, the Storm, though, they're oh, the best team in the comp at the moment. Broncos, Dolphins, goodbye, Dolphins. Yeah, that's them, done. Waz and the Eagles, 22 all. Get lost, Golden Point, you frig off, no. Eels versus the Cowboys, good win for the Eels. Yeah, especially against the Cowboys side on a roll. So I think that 27 20. Scoreline, that's the team I'm following this weekend. Sharks, who's sleeping on them, beating the Rabbits? Well, he's still, he's, well, is he going to have a job by the end of the week? Dragons win for what, the second time this season over to time? Be the season? I, I agree with Benji. Had yeah. to be the worst game I watched. And the Raiders in Golden Point last night against the Titans as well. And Ricky and Dez going head to head on that. Sharks, Storm, Raiders, Cowboys, Dolphins, Panthers, Warriors, Sea Eagles in that order. Six quick questions for you. Did SJ milk that penalty? 100%. <laughs> is Joey Manu the best player in the comp? Because James Graham reckons he is. He is. I reckon he is too. Is Xavier Coates the best winger in the comp right now? At the moment. Will the Titans ever win a game? Yes. Who do you think deserved to win more out of Manly and the Warriors? Or Manly threw it away. Golden Point needs to get shot. Shoot it. And out of this top five right now, the Sharks, the Storm, the Raiders, the Cowboys, the Dolphins, how many of those are going to be in the top five by season's end? Oh, maximum three. The Weekend Roundup. Why is there no standout side, Tony, after six weeks? That's a surprise, isn't it? They haven't got a Brisbane or a Penrith side sticking out and saying, this is our comp again. After Penrith won three in a row, uh, grand finals we're talking about, and the Broncos, the way that they finished the season last year, I would have thought they would have been sitting up there in the top two, but they're sitting at 10th at the moment. And the, and the Panthers, with no Nathan Cleary, they're looking pretty average over the last couple of weeks too. So I think there's a lot of um, chinks in the, the armour like we were talking about last week. Matty Johns, when we get him on, we'll get his take on it too because it's six weeks into the competition and this is when you want to start having a look at the, the, the pitches and the troughs of teams and where they're going. If you look at the, the wins and the losses, Marty, it's pretty much across the board. There's no standout team. And if you're sitting... Oh, that's what I said right at the beginning of the show. If you're sitting there with a one point out of a possible two, like the Warriors got with Manly on the weekend, is it going to hurt you at the end of the year? Only four teams have won four games, Storms, Sharks, Raiders and Cowboys. Let's look at that Storm side. Are they using all their luck up early? They got an 8-0 win against Penrith. They scored late to win against the Warriors. They scored late to win against the Dogs. I think one of the, the master strokes already from Bellamy, he's had plenty of them through his time at uh, the Storm, is naming the young hooker as their skipper. You know, and getting him sort of into that groove of being the, the Queensland hooker, the Australian hooker, and now the Storm captain. Harry Grant you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, and just, you know, playing playing out, out of his skin. And it gives the likes of Munster. I thought Munster was sensational. Even though he's carrying a groin injury, I thought he was very, very good in that game. Um, and the likes of Jerome Hughes, just the, that space with Pepinows and coming back after that compound fracture last year just to get around and, and do the do the job that they, they can do. You've got to remember, and this is one thing that will never change, if your spine is, is um, Pepinhausen, Munster, Hughes, and of course you've got young Harry Grant running around in the nine jersey who's now captain, right? that's, a, that's well, two or sh well, three of them, you could say that Pepinhausen's an un unlucky one, he hasn't played New South Wales yet. Three of them are Australian New Zealand internationals, and Pepinhausen, mate, if it, if it wasn't such a, a game full of fullbacks at the moment with Trebojevic and Turbo, you know, Turbo, you've got um, the Sydney City fullback. Yeah, Tedesco, you know, yeah. You've got Tedesco, you've got Reese Walsh, all these, there as well, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm. You've got so many good players, um, they'd have to be 
be close to having the best spawn in the comp. Can we talk about the Canterbury left edge, though, in that game? Um, Kiko, Jury, uh, White and uh, Addo Carr, when they get it right, and their coach said this afterwards, I thought they were exhilarating to watch when they get it right. They didn't win the game. But well, that is showing enough signs for me that they are going to be maybe... They, they will upset some sides. The, the most lethal um, teams have a lethal left edge. You know, with kick out, see, kick out Crichton, Burton... Uh, even though Burton's playing five eight at the moment, he's sitting out there on that left edge. At Penrith, when they were there, they, you just couldn't stop that. You know, you got Crichton drifting in around fullback. You got Burton starting to get a running game together. Kick out for me over the last two weeks. He's he's just once he's he's getting going. He's a he's an Ali Low Teddy type player. I love that. Guy. You know, he's he's big, strong. Look what look what Tedesco happened to Tedesco last week when he tried to try to tackle him down that sideline. Um, and you're right, Marty. If you if Serraldo can get that left eye edge firing. The rest of the other t- the, the, the team will get some confidence, and they'll start to get some wins. I th- oh, look, I thought they were unlucky. I thought they were unlucky not to not to get that game. They've got plenty in them and plenty of points. Um, they again, like I said to you, as everyone's going win loss win loss at the moment. Are Canterbury one of those teams like? Um, if you if you can say like the Newcastle Knights last year that go on a ten game winning streak later on in the year and come back big at, at the big time um, Bulldogs at the moment are two and four but you're talking about three and three teams Parramatta Brisbane Roosters yeah they've all won three they've all lost three they've all looked really good they've all looked ugh. how many of those three are going to make the eight because at the start of the year you'd probably say at least two out of the three oh look the Ro- I, I think the Roosters have still got. Plenty of um, football in them. I, I don't know with the eels with injuries. You know, like Mitchell Moses is out, and they and they pull one out one out of the bag uh, last week. And can they continue to do that? I'm not too sure. Um, but the Broncos, I just think the Broncos are uh, they're chalk and cheese from where they were last year. So when they start to get it together, they're going to they're going to. Well, why skip is up. there no consistency? I mean, th- these three sides define inconsistency at the moment. Oh, look, I, th- I think there's a number of uh, areas that we haven't really um, spent a lot of time talking about. I think one of them is the refereeing. Like the refereeing is out the gate. You know, you've got restarts that are happening um, continually uh, set to six on the back of, of uh, errors or, you know, you, Ricky Stewart, he made a really good point. He said, you know, talking about cheating, Desi, you know, like you guys with your hands yeah, on, the, wrestling on the on ball the and wrestling the ball, and yeah, holding us down, yep, yep. we should have had another 10. Now, the refereeing, depending on who you've got, see, like rugby union and all the rules... In rugby union, you've got that many rules that a referee interprets it so so differently, doesn't he? You know, they talk about Northern Hemisphere it's referees. Fantastic. It's one of the only sports in the world open to interpretation by a referee. How ridiculous is that? Well, I, see, I think what's happening in these first six rounds is the referee is open to interpretation. So you can go back to back sets of six and you can get some momentum going and all of a sudden you get that flow going again and you start to get yourself back into the game. Whereas... In the past, when we never had sets of six or restarts and you're given a penalty. See, this is the other thing too. Like, Why can't you give a penalty as opposed to a reset? Because at times you need that penalty. And if it's especially, I think if they're going to do a reset, you know, for instance, and you're inside 30, okay? And they say, that's a reset. You get another set of six. I reckon you say, what do you want? Do you want a penalty? And you yeah, go, take the penalty. Go kick it 20 metres up the field and start from the halfway line. Thank well, you very much. No, no, I'm talking about going in. I'm talking about attacking. So from 30 metres out, if they say that's a, that's a set reset. Oh, I see what you mean. Yep. You can, you can, the, the, the um, captain can pull his hand up and say, no, we want the penalty. And he just blows the whistle. Yep, that's a penalty. Okay, well, look at that Newcastle game to start with, right? And that was the, the, the opening match of the round, Knights against the Roosters. And if you want to hear booing from a crowd, go back and listen to that on the TV. It just comes roaring through. And that was one of those classic ones where he's not keeping the 10. Now, to me, it's the most obvious thing. You've got two liners, you've got a referee. Why are we still talking about that? And this is what Golden Point's silly old extra time turns into, doesn't it? Where no one polices that. And 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 that was what Des was moaning about last night. Well, and that was one of those those times, too, where he, the referee should have blew, blew, um, blew the whistle and given that penalty away so they get the two points and stay within the game, go into extra time the nights. You know, be, that's the, what the booing was mainly about, that they weren't getting the penalties. Um, rather than getting into a position, see that was it. They got into a position to to have a penalty to draw the game to go into extra time. But the referee said another set of six. Now, now that's my point. You should be able to say, well, mate, it's twenty two twenty. We need the penalty. Yeah, we don't. You know, you can't just say, well, you know. Otherwise, what teams do? Because this is the other part of it. Coaches teach them like Desi does to slow them right down. Well, that's to put the their point. hands yes, on them. Yes. You know, keep them in the game. And and if you get a game as tight as what they did against Canberra. It took, it took a field goal to, to split him. 
I want to talk more, uh, um, you know, about about that when we get into the Warriors as well, and also talk about Golden Point in a second because I can't stand Golden Point. I've got a big moan about that coming. Forty six thousand on Friday night in Brisbane for the Broncos and the Dolphins. How cool is that? I mean, this is a club game of rugby league in Australia. I know it's the Brisbane Broncos. I know they're at home, but forty six thousand. How many other sports want that size of the crowd? Two parts to that question. The second is, did that really show us who the Dolphins are that game? Yeah, or the well, it, it did. Yeah, you know, and, and as soon as they lost Fido, you know the speedster, um, they lost so much more. They lost all their chances on the back of some very good footballers that uh, expect for him to come on the end of it, and you just can't catch him when he gets away. And of course, his hammy's always a chance of going. He's so fast. Um, but when you get Fledger out, you've got uh, Fido out, you've got a couple of niggly injuries now. This is what we're talking about, the Dolphins. They haven't got the depth in their side to come in and continually just challenge at that top end. And this is where they, I think over the next few weeks they're going to start to fall fall away, especially against the Eels this week. That's the, the punt of the weekend for me. Um, but, yeah, it's look, it's really interesting, Marty. When you, when you say how are they going and... and do teams tend to to need players on the football field if they're going to stay within touch? I think this year more than ever. You know, when I look at the likes of Sean Johnson, and you know, a couple of years ago when Sean was playing that bad, I'll say, mate, he should hang your boots up. You know, like it's you're in COVID, you don't look like you're enjoying your football, and then they've come home and he's had a he's had a stellar year last year, as a whole seventeen of them have. Um, and then he's come out this year I mean, after the game on fr- uh, Friday, Saturday, Saturday night. Saturday night I checked the NRL uh, Dally M um, odds. I was like, mate, he's a he's a special. Mm-hmm. He's a special. One, they owe it to him. Like Caelan Ponga said, mate, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, yours. Yeah, this is your last year, yeah. Um, but he's a special, the way that he's playing. You know, if it wasn't for Sean Johnson, he gets him back into the game, he kicks the winning goal, even though his foot was snapped from the charge down for <laughs> Yeah, come, I know. Come, on, I mean? come, come on, on, come on, come on. We'll talk about that in a second, actually. But, he's, but, but mate, he's so crucial. And I think at the moment, the way the competition is, you've got to be really careful when you're losing your key playmakers. Otherwise, the competition's going to get away on well, you. Well, you know, we'll talk more about that in the Up the Waz segment. Sleeping on the Sharks. They've won four. They have beaten the Waz, the Dogs, the Raiders South. They've lost to the Tigers. They're sitting there top of the table at the moment. Last year, we know they got through to the finals and they lost their first game in the finals. Are they a good side? I'm, I'm, st- I'm still kind of, mm, are they? I, don't, I mean, I, when I say good, they're a top eight side, but are they a championship winning side? Well, they've choked, haven't they, the last couple of years when they've got through the top four and, and got bundled out in a, in a couple of games straight away. So, you know, Fitzgibbon will be hurting having that in the back of his mind. He's a pretty intense guy, um, Craig Fitzgibbon, the way that he prepares his team and you know, there's a, an, a, apparently an immense amount of work that goes in behind the scenes. And he's trying to correct it. And, and look, if they can make hay while the sun shines at the moment where this competition is up and down and they can sit top for long periods of time... I guarantee you if he gets him there in the top four, he would have learnt a lot because you, you've got to lose those games to know what, what you need to correct come the end of the year. And they'd be one of the teams that I would think all the others are pretty scared about. You know, if they make the four, they know that they've lost a couple of games not to get them through to that final and he'd have them prepared. Golden point before I do a big moan about it. Tell me, I mean, we saw two games on the weekend. Tell me why you can't have a draw. You've played for 80 minutes. You've been out there and done that. You've busted your butt. Do you know what, actually, the, the thing I hate about it the most is that when you win, you're, it's, you're exalted. When you lose, you trudge out of the stadium and you kick the dog on the way home, right? When you get a draw, there's this other mixed emotions. Like half of the crowd's going, oh, God, we're going, oh, that almost feels like a win. The other half feel like a loss. Why are they taking that away from us? <laughs> I love that aspect of it. Well, but having played in, in those games, Marty, like when you get to 80 minutes and you've really put the effort in and then you've got to go and strategize, you know, you do strategize around if we do go to a golden point, this is what we're going to do. Um, and I think... Golden Point sort of got away on us as far as a spectacle. It's a bo- it's a bo- it's a boring concept because all all the teams do now is they roll up the football field just to get you prepared for a drop kick. They're always offside. Referees could penalise them ten, nine times out of ten, and someone could win it from a penalty. Um, but it's a ball fest, and I think that if you if you've put the effort in for eighty minutes, split the points there. What's wrong with that? Yeah, most, have... most most coaches will be you know they're, they're gutted that their team has to continue to play that extra 20 minutes because it's preparation for the following game. Now, if you're, you've you got a short turnaround, you've played an extra time, it stuffs your week up. You know, you can't get as much work into them because I've put another 20 minutes. You know, I think he ran for 340 metres on the weekend uh, Charles Lickle Crockstead did. Um, so, you know, you, you've got to take all of that into account. And what I just think, take the take the penalty or the, or the drop kick out of it. If you're going to do something, make it more exciting so that f- the fans love it. 
But it becomes a bore for Moan, moan, moan. I'm moaning, moaning all the that. time. Oh, it's Monday. I've got to moan on a right. Golden point extra time. Why? Who needs it? Who wants it? What's wrong with the draw anyway? Manly versus the Warriors. If any game ever deserved to end even Stevens, it was that one. And I'm happy with that. Neither team really deserved to win, although both easily could have. Neither team deserved to lose again, but both did their very best to achieve that. Wasn't a draw a fair result? Tell me again, argue somehow that a draw was not a fair result. Sport is meant to be a metaphor for life. The highs, lows, frustrations, glories, disappointments, the regrets, the utter joy when something happens you want to happen so bad but least expect. And sometimes in life you get a draw. Not everything has to be or does end in a win or a loss. There were plenty of lessons learned for both sides in that game. Why the need to contrive a different result out of it? And that's the point, a different result. The game ended in a draw. Leave it like that. And it's not just me who's saying this. Many in league and rugby think the same. Wayne Bennett is one. Golden Point is nothing but a marketing gimmick. That's all it is. Something contrived in a whiteboard session by a bunch of advertising tossers wanting more entertainment in another Instagram post and put it on TikTok. I say F off. Finals footy, sure. I understand the need then for one side or other to win. But round-robin matches don't need it. A draw is the result. Golden Point needs to get lost. The match ended in a draw. Walk away. Accept it. Devlin. I'm as proud as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. The platform. Oh, superb. Up the was. How good is that? On the text message, if Kimmy thinks the drama of Golden Point is a bore fest, he probably falls asleep on a roller coaster. <laughs> well, yeah, they, look, they, yeah, they're not that scary roller coasters. Look, I, I just think that if you're gonna if you're gonna create, then this is what the NRL are trying to do, aren't they? They're trying to create excitement all the time it's, in the game. And the game's rugby. exciting enough, mate. And it, and it, I'll tell you what the problem is. It's been around for that long now that even the footballers are going, man, this is boring. Like getting to getting to the to extra me, time. it's not rugby league, Tony. What it does is, as you say, it creates this contrived situation of just trying for field goals. It's not. Well, actual- you have twenty minutes without playing football, okay? So, you, so you get Adam Fanua Blake go down the middle with Tohu Harris, Jazz Tavaga. Give me four, four down there. Set me up right in front of the. You know, put a put a screen up and let me drop drop goal and win it by one point. And it's. Just, I reckon it's the worst way to win a football game. Worst way to lose it as well. Was that just one of those games for the Warriors? Because the performance was the worst so far of the season. But when you when you say that out loud and then you say 16 points down in the first half and then at the end of it you come back and go, got something out of the game. So I think that when you put all of that into the same pie, the pie tastes it tastes okay, doesn't it? Oh, of course it does. They'll be, they'd be over the moon to get a point out of that game. And, and you, if you think about it, they could have easily won it in the, in the extra time because they got themselves back into it. You think at home, Sean's, you know, he's got a good right foot on him in a drop goal situation. They know how to work down the football field and set it up and he just couldn't hit that hit that winner. Um well, so, did he milk that penalty? Yeah, well, I don't think I don't think you'd say milk it, but he would have thrown his leg out, you know, he he see halfbacks are really bright. Well, it is a penalty. This is the whole point. The rules are the rules are the rules. And he knows the guy's coming out the corner of his eye, right? Now, that guy didn't have to take that tackle. That guy could have let him in the rain against the wind, slippery ball. I'm going to give you a crack from 45 metres, son, and if you kick that over, we're going to to add it on time, right? Yeah. And so it, it was a dumb thing to do. It was, you know. But again, as front rowers, that you know, their their energy levels are down, and they, their thinking's not straight. And he didn't get to him. When you look at it and slow it right down, he didn't actually. Get no, he didn't to get him. to Sean, him. Sean, Sean, Sean threw his foot into yeah, him. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But at the end. you're not allowed to, you know. And I, I believe this is right, you're not allowed to attack the half. No, you can't because of what Lussick did the previous week and that's yeah. what happens. And and again, see, that's the, the irony of it. Lussick, they lose Lussick the week before on Ilias in the South Sydney Reserve Grade game and uh, who, would be, who would believe it but to win and get themselves back into the game, exactly the same thing happens to Sean Johnson. What are the referees going to do? Well, I'll tell you right now, when it goes to the bunker, what's the bunker going to well, do? That's right, can't, can't do anything else. You talk about... Des Hasler slowing the game down. I thought Manly were absolute experts at it. Can I put a, a rugby analogy here? When teams play the All Blacks, what they need to do is to stop us playing. And that's what I thought Manly came to do. They wanted to stop the Warriors playing. And they were really successful at it. So when it turns into a stop-start game, there's a lot of penalties. There's no real flow on. Is that why we had so many errors? Because we were just kind of overreaching at times? Because there's a lot of flat passes there that were just being slightly overrun. Jackson Ford dropped a couple, but he was picking them up off his hip, Tony. Right. Yeah, yeah, look, Jackson Ford, he's probably the only bloke I've seen this year that really hasn't hit what he did last year. You know, that second-year syndrome in first grade. He's dropped some some key balls over the last six weeks. Um, and you'd have to think that if you had a full full complement of players here, Jackson Ford will probably be struggling to hold down a spot. But 
in saying that, when you can when you can hang in there, see, at 16, at 16 points up, right before half time, you've got 20 seconds to go and you try and score another try to put them to sleep. You throw an intercept pass. Uh-huh. There was a three-on-one overlap if Dallin didn't get that too. 100%, but you, mate, Dallin's an intercept king. That's not the percentage play, is it? That's, That's not, what I'm talking about, charging Sean Johnson. It's not a percentage play. Like You put it into the corner and D- Daly Chever- uh, Cherry Evans knows better. Like... I'm going to go for the knockout punch. He's got he's got this thing in his head. I'm going for the knockout punch here. We're right on top of it. 20, 22 points up at half time. Throws that ball and Dallin goes down untouched and gets them back into the game. So instead of it being a an eighteen point twenty point split, it's back down to twelve. You know what I mean? So it's a it's a mental um, application that you go on at half time to say, actually, boys, we're still in it, even though we're not. We're still in it. Let's just hang in there. Well, and also, you know, the Warriors have been able to turn it around against Melbourne in the second half. And that's what I thought. I just thought, dumbass Manly doing that because you've actually opened the door here and left it open a bit. So at the end of it, you know, the Warriors, I think most of us probably feel that, hey, we'll take something out of the game the way that the team played. Is that just, going back to my original question, an aberration though? Is that just one of those games ordered Manly unpick something that other teams are going to look at here and go, this is how to stop them. Well, they, the coaches are pretty good these days. I'll be looking at, you know, how they made that that um, that scoreline the way they did in that first half and how they got there so easily. But like you said, you don't know the, the full um, context of it, you know, because they were they did look flat and they were, you know, dropping footballs and they weren't having their high percentages or whatever. And you had a couple of good players that played okay and you had a couple of players that didn't play okay, you know. And, of course, what we're used to seeing with the Warriors is across the board everyone having a really stellar yeah, yeah. stellar effort over yeah. 80 minutes. So I think that is what, in the context of the competition, is what's happening across the board. You've got, look at Latrell Mitchell itself and Cody Walker. Like, they they haven't even found any no, form no, no, whatsoever. No, no. And then you see a team come out, like like this this gentleman just said here about, you know, Manly come and beat Penrith and then we come and beat Manly and so we should be top of the... That's what's going on. Players aren't hitting that type of form, and it's not consi- there's no consistency around it. And I think if you, get, you pick up the one point, the Warriors going at half time. If they if they said, "Oh, yeah, we'll take something out of this game at the end of it," especially in the last minute when they're down by eight, I, th- I think they'd, they'd take it. Warriors next couple of games away. Dragon sets on Friday night at eight o'clock, and then follow that up playing the Titans the following Thursday. That's a short turnaround. So, again, just in terms of confidence and you being a player and being a, co- a past coach and, and things like that, just to get away with something from the game, it changes training the following. It must. They must actually think those the Warriors players these days are like, like, that should be been an L. That could easily have been an L. Should have been an L. Good God, we might have got a win out of it, but we'll take something. Yeah, well, it's, you know, they've, they've got a saying, you know, when you're used to winning, you find ways to win. And they found they found a way in the last minute. When I, I guarantee you there were a, a thousand people sitting at home, turn their TV off for, with two minutes to go, going, "Oh, they're not going to get eight points in two minutes." And I'll go and make a cup of tea, and then all of a sudden they turn it back on, and the kick and field got to win it. <laughs> but that's, that's how exciting rugby league is at the moment. You just you can't you know you look what Xavier Coates did to us in that game in, in Melbourne. Um, you can't say that at the moment. I think the competition, and this is what I want to talk to Manny about, is probably the most even comp that I've seen in the last four years. I think anyone can win the comp um, within reason. You know what I mean? So when and it is only after six rounds. When you've got this, yeah, that. calm down. You know, like calm down when you're saying they they will win the comp. They they I think there's a, you know a good eight teams that could win the comp this year if the form continues the way it is. You've got Brisbane Broncos sitting at tenth. And they start the season of favourites to win it. We will break. We will come back. He's a ledge. Matty Johns joining us. Still to come, TK's top five. Tony will give you a good bet to put on, to put on before the end of the week as well. And we'll go head-to-head, the Effluix Cleanup Player of the Week. Lots to come on the Rugby League app. He's a ledge. What a warm welcome it is to the program to Matty Johns. Thank you so much for joining us, mate. Uh, no problem, lads. What's going on? Hey, Ma- hey, Matty. What about that uh, that trumpet entrance there? Sound like you're running out on a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the old days. <laughs> Run on the marathon stadium. The uh, we had the Newcastle Knights had the trumpet was going. So rusty and <laughs> yeah, like been back in nine. 90- <laughs> that horse running up and down there, falling over. Hey, Matty, what do you, what do you, what do you make of the competition at the moment, mate? With the, um, I guess the teams, Broncos sitting tenth, winning and losing week. You know, there's no real standout, is there? It can be. It's, it's certainly a lot more open than it's been in previous seasons. Uh, firstly, I'll, I'll say the standard of the football, and like I've said to you, blokes, uh, a few times before, I, I've, I haven't seen the standard better. 
Uh, the game is just it, it's booming over here as, as well as booming in New Zealand, and uh, I, I think it's a I think it's a really quality competition. Um, it uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, I, look, I went through the list the other day of the sides that can win it. Like the last couple of years, you sort of go, yeah, there were probably three or four sides at most. Where this year, there's I think there's about probably three or four Smokies outside of the heavyweights. So I think it's a terrific competition. Matty, give us your Smokies then, mate. Uh, Smokies, well, I there's a couple. The, the team that you blokes played on the weekend, I think Manly is certainly capable. They've got to tidy up some aspects of their game. The Cowboys are one. The Cowboys, the Cowboys are an interesting side. I don't think there's any team in the competition that opens the field up better than the Cowboys. But the problem is when they hand the ball over, they they can't shut it. So that's the aspect. That, like With the football, there's no problem with the Cowboys. If they can just tidy up their defence, they're going to be a difficult side to beat. And I don't know whether you call the Warriors a smoky. I, th- I, think, I think they're a better chance than that. But, you know, like you, you throw the Warriors in there. and uh, Warriors really... This, this is going to sound absurd because... All things considered, it, it was probably um, on purely on performance, probably their worst performance of the year. Yeah, we've been talking about that. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know, the, the first half can be uh, like that. I, I was looking at the home going, well, I tell you what, geez, they're off their game today. It's not going to be their. It's it's not going to be their day. But they found a way to get a point, and the difference between you know having a good season. And having a top four season or even a title winning season is when you're way off your game and everything points to not going to, you're not going to get the win or it's not going to be your day, yet you find a way to, to get a win or at least in the Warriors' case, get a point. And it showed a lot of, I think it just showed so much belief that was, uh, you know, what, five, six minutes to go you down by eight points, there's no way you're going to win it. Uh, but, but you just found a way. Yeah, they found they found a way, and I just want to ask you a couple of questions on on that um, answer there, Matty. The first one about Manly and Josh Schuster, you know this kid who's on eight hundred thousand dollars playing reserve grade. Um, what's yeah. what's your thoughts on that? Well, Campy, the first thing is that I've got to say I object to some of the comments that have been thrown around regarding Josh. You know, that one thing about you know professional sport is sometimes you can, I think. People, uh, there's a lack of empathy or sensitivity around individuals and what they're enduring. And there's no doubt, like, uh, Josh has, he struggled with his body. He's a kid who naturally s- struggles to get himself in, in top shape. But my understanding at the moment is that, you know, those, th- those difficulties are stemming off personal problems, which are pretty heavy. Um, and I think, you know, if people understood some of those things, there'd be a lot more empathy going his way. I, I really like Shuey as a player, and maybe there's a little bit of bias, you know, with myself mm. and, and, and Kebby, given the fact we played with his Uncle Johnny. But I, I really like him as a footballer. I like him as a person, too. I see him up around our way, and I, I he's a t- terrific young bloke. Um there's so many aspects to his game. He's just, he's just can't be, he's just lost his way a little bit as far as his football is concerned. Forget about the injuries and all that stuff at the moment. I saw a few signs last year, and this can happen a lot with young players, particularly with young players that have got so many, uh, so many weapons in their arsenal. Like Josh can do just about anything. He is an, an enormous talent, but you know. Um, yeah, with that, with that, they're having so many, so many things to his game. There's a lot of things that can go wrong as well. And mm-hmm. I think, I, I reckon Josh just needs to scale back and simplify his game and rebuild it. Um, you know, rebuild his game, rebuild his confidence. He's too good a bloke to be thrown on the scrap heap. Yeah. I, I, I think it'd be crazy if someone doesn't pick him up and give him a chance. I would love to. I would love for Josh to spend the rest of this year under someone like Wayne Bennett. Someone who just understands the individual, and I think he would he would be enormous for Josh. I, I think, you know, I, I think the fitness problems with Josh, everything off that is just stemming from personal issues. And I think Wayne is the sort of coach that would l- allow Josh to get his focus back and sort out those issues. Yeah, I, th- I think he 
you know, someone like a Wayne Bennett, or even just going to spend a season or two up in the in the UK too, mate, just to get rid of the pressure yeah. and enjoy your football and build it. Um, he'll come, he'd come back a better player because he's young enough. Mate, this this other thing that I wanted to ask you about was these three players, Sean Johnson, Daly Cherry Evans and, and Reynolds, did you ever think that in your day you'd see th- three 35-year-old halfbacks running around fighting it out for the comp? Campy, it's unbelievable. It just shows you the advance of sports science in the fact that, I mean, Cameron Smith could still be playing. Uh, Daly Cherry Evans, honestly, it's like down in touch with the Blake never gets injured. He's moving as well as he did as in, as in his debut season in 2011. And Sean Johnson... Blokes in their mid thirties should not be scoring long long range tries like he did in that in that second half. It, it's unbelievable, Cappy. Uh, I said last year I made a comment and he, you know, <clears throat> Blake said, "Mate, you, you know, um, you know what's going on with Maddie? He must be on drugs." And I said, "Wrong, brother." Anyway, <laughs> I said, <laughs> and I said that I reckon within a decade we'll have a couple of players playing into their forties, and yeah. I, I stand back. I stand by that. Like Daly Tree Evans, you know, he's got he's got at least another two or three seasons left in him. And I'm starting to think the same with Sean. Finally, just quickly, Matty, thank you so much again, mate. Golden point, we've been arguing about this. Does the game really need it? I mean, you know, when you get a draw and you get that trudge off the field, half of you think you've won, half of you think you've lost. What is wrong with yeah. the draw and splitting the points after 80 minutes, mate? I, I think it's a marketing gimmick. I've never liked it. I... I Look, I I do like it. I don't like the field goal aspect of it. It's become a bit of a shootout. I'd like to see that be, um, you know, you got to, you know, it's got to be, you got to accumulate four points. Mm. I think, you know, whether it be, you know, two, two penalty goals, so the opposition can't be, you know, basically stand offside the whole time, uh, or or a try. I, I do like it. I mean, there is nothing wrong with the draw. I get that, but I think we are we are in the entertainment industry. And I understand the purists that, that, that don't like it, but I tell you what, whenever you're, you're at a ground and the game goes into golden point, a buzz goes through the stadium. I appreciate your time enormously. I know you're very busy, mate. Can be telling us, say thank you. Cheers, Matty. You're a good man. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be, you know, mate. Anything for you, brother. Yeah, mate. Thanks for coming on, Matty. Good to chat. We'll talk again soon. See you, lads. Matty John's out of Australia with us. Head to head. Six separate sporting topics, league du jour, and 30 seconds on each to argue yay or nay against. Golden Point needs to get gone. Get gone, shoot it, kick it out. Oh, look, I like what Matty said about making it a four points um, spread. Like You've got to win it. Uh, I, I guess what he's saying is you've got to score a try to win it. So play football. Like If you're going to extend it by another 20 minutes, like don't close up shop. Let your front rows take it and set your line down the middle of the park so you can get a shot at field goal. Actually play some football. You know, why don't they just, you know, maybe even have a drop-off, like get rid of a player. So you go up against 12 defenders. If you can score a try, you score. If you don't, you lose two defenders and they come back and you've only got 11. See, right there, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard part of the marketing department discussion when this thing came into play. Look, finals football fine. I understand it because you've got to get a separator. Team's got to win. Look, it's the same as when you argue about, you know, people argue about penalty shootout at the end of World Cup football matches. It goes for two hours. I'll come back and play. You can't come back and play tomorrow. You've got to end it, and there's got to be a skill involved. There's a skill involved in doing the field goal. I understand that. But the rest of it, I just think it's garbage. No, I, I, look, I like it, but I like it in the circumstances that we do need it, and I think for regulation round Robin games, it's just not needed. I would have been quite happy with 80 minutes at the end of that going, suck, and that's that, a draw. In the top five back in 89, we had to come back. We played Balmain on the Sunday. We beat them to finish fifth equal. We had to come back and play them on Tuesday. Manly absolutely blew that, yes or no? Yeah, they did. And uh, I think the decision by Daly Trevins right, right on half time to put the nail in the coffin, probably when he, shot, he went a little bit too early, should have, he should have just put that ball in the corner and gone in with that 16-point lead. Um but you know you've got to you've got to take your hat hat off to the Warriors. Like they weren't playing the best football. Matty John said that. Yeah, you know, you know, even he's watching it from their gun. They're not they're not on today. But they found a way to get some points, and that's a sign of a really really good team. See, I just think that you argued my argument there, which is very convenient. And when you're down <laughs> 16 nil, and you score 22 points, you can say that Manly blew it. But the Warriors scored 22 points, which means they had to construct. Three different tries. Yes, they got one off the intercept. Sean's try was absolutely amazing. That's got to be the try of the weekend. And then to wrestle that pass out, to get that to Dallin at the end. Look, so 
there are aspects to the Warriors game where I think they absolutely deserve something from the game. So it's difficult for me to argue that, hey, Manly blew it. If Manly blew it, well then, you know, I would think, hey, they had a 40-point lead or something and they managed to choke it from there. So in the end, draw is probably a fair result. Souths are going to have a brand new coach in the next couple of weeks, and his name is Mel Meninga, yes or no? No, it's not no? Mel Meninga. No, 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 I know he's saying that he hasn't even spoken to South Sydney, and they'll, they'll throw those types of, of names around, you know, like the the Madge Maguire's coaching New South Wales. You've got, oh, no, Billy Slater. Does he want to go and coach South Sydney? I don't know, but Mel Meninga up there, the Titans must be gutted that this, this is going around. They're director of football up at the Titans there. Um, Mel Meninga being touted. I'll tell you who's going to be coaching them. Wayne Bennett. I told you that two weeks ago. He's the coach. Is it Demetrio's fault, though, in the end? And this is the thing. I mean, it's easy to blame the coach, isn't it? Because that's the first thing that we do, get rid of the coach. I'm sitting there looking at the Titans going, well, is Des Hasler a bad coach all of a sudden? Is, you know, is Ricky Stewart, when his team loses every second game, a bad coach? Is, the, is Trent Robinson Sorrell, a bad coach? I mean, all of these guys, you know, they're a three and three at the moment. I mean, does that mean that you're a good coach or does that mean you're a bad coach? With South, the problems are so endemic that somebody eventually has to fall on their sword, though. And they're not going to get rid of their Showtime boys, are they? They're not going to get rid of Cody Walker and they're not going to get rid of Latrell because that's what brings the spectators through the gate. Demetrio doesn't, so... Sell jerseys. Xavier Coates is the best wing in the comp, yay or nay? Well, he's one of the best wingers in the comp. You know, you have to think the Fox coming back and scoring a couple of tries on the weekend. I think was, he got a hat trick. Um, I, look, I think that Dallin Martini Zilesnax left where he, off where he, he, where he was last year. Uh, Xavier Coates... Is he gonna is he gonna make the state of origin side? You'd have to say yes at the moment. We've still got a few more weeks to go. Um I'd say he's in the top three, four wingers at the moment. I wouldn't say he's the best winger that's in the competition. I think there's a couple that may be in front of him. I watched a couple of extraordinary pieces of play that he did uh in the game against the dogs. Uh one of them where he was held by three defenders and he put a grubber kick through blind for Smith's try it was amazing. Um uh, the tackle on Tracy was incredible as well. Uh, it's a game at the moment that it is just set up for spectacular plays from wingers. And that's one of the greatest things about watching it, isn't it? That you sit there and, you know... But then again, I read the other day about Martin O'Fire getting his boy in and I looked at that and I, and I remembered him and I think you'll, you'll absolutely recall Martin O'Fire. Was there a better player to watch in the whole game when he was playing than him? He running running out of fear. Jeez, he couldn't catch him. <laughs> they called him <laughs> Chariot. They called him that for a reason. Um... The disruptive tackle should get gone. Oh, sorry, the disruptive penalty should get oh, gone. I know, what you, I know what you're saying. So when you're going in and you're, and you're jumping for the ball... Your cable and got, got done on the weekend. you got no, no eyes for it. You're just trying to create, you know, a little bit of uh, commotion around the football so it can be knocked on. You get a repeat set or it falls into the hands and maybe maybe um, you get a try. Again, I'm just saying, like, these referees have got enough to worry about at the moment with just coaches trying to coach other ways to try and get uh, that momentum to swing back their side. It has to be gone. I think that it's got to protect the guy who's catching the ball, and rugby do this as well. And one of the things about it is, the, the you know, as far as rugby is concerned, I think it's a great rule that you, you have got to be in control. Your duty of care is you've got to know what you're doing. And I suppose what it is is that when Cable jumps, he's got his arms up. The guy's seeing the arms, and it's distracting, and you're trying to protect yourself. And in the end, Troy, Trevojevic drops that ball because of that. So that's why it's a distractor or it's called a disruptor. I just don't want rugby league to go down the same way of rugby that all of a sudden there's another 170 pages to the rule book and there's another... You know, you've got a grapple like it, tackle and a chicken tackle and a, you know, a hip drop tackle. You've got, all of a sudden, all of these other things have come in. Finally, is Taylor May and that Instagram post the <laughs> dumbest thing that you saw from any rugby league player the, over what, the weekend? last decade or the last 20 years? Or because well, of, I thought Valentine Holmes was ridiculous last, waving his bag of white powder around. But this is just idiotic, isn't it? I just, I, some, sometimes you wonder where these guys are, are actually coming from, you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, you pay to go to training, train hard, play football... You earn a good living, and and it's a very short time. Get on with it, and get it, get in and out of the game as quick as possible without you know having to deal with things like this. And I just think Taylor May at the moment when he did that, um, yeah, not not, not okay, very people, smart. Okay, if you son. don't know what it is, is that he's posted a video of a mate of his driving a sports car that hired off some kind of thing called ruthless car hire or something, and he's tagged it and he's put ruthless driving. He's like driving ruthless, it ruthless, like no roof. Ruthless, as in the poor baby that they haven't found the killers for in Lower Hut, mate. And they, and so he's driving at almost 100k through suburban streets with oncoming traffic, giggling and laughing in the passenger seat. I mean, what, man, what? And you post this on social media so other people can look at it? You how, know what the consequence is, Dumbo. 
Yeah, I know. And you know what? It's the eyes on the of the world on him. And this is what Maddie was talking about with Josh Schuster. You've got the eyes of the world on you. know what? We both got 20, 20 year old boys. Um, sometimes they make you know those type of decisions. Well, we're lucky that we didn't have all this TikTok bollocks around at the time, and that we didn't get yeah. filmed doing our stuff. But that's an excuse. The Influx Cleanup Award. <laughs> Now, the way this works, and the sponsor wants to make it clear, Tony, <laughs> that you take the goop and you turn it into gold. So it's got to be something that is rubbish and crap, and you somebody <laughs> or a team has picked that up. But and the, but the goop you it. take, and can you put it somewhere? Like, can we just take the goop and put it in the bunker? <laughs> well, I mean, I know you had the bunker last week. Who is it this week? Who cleaned up? Oh, Sean Johnson, 100%. You know, like, he's absolutely outstanding um, Form-wise, so look, I wasn't joking when I said I went to the NRL to check the futures to see whether or not I could get daily end price on him uh, at the moment because I think he'll pick up quite a few points um, as the season goes on. Jeez, I hope he stays fit. Uh, the Warriors a definite chance this year with him in that type of form. And just the way, I guess, that he got them back into the game, Matty talked about you don't score those type of tries at the moment. I haven't seen him run that far for a long time. But the one that got me was when he got his hands free to get that ball out to the winger. Like, you will be gutted on the inside defenders and the and the defender on the outside that didn't shut him down so that he could get his hands up and throw that ball out um, out there. And not only that, then he goes last minute, gets the penalty, kicks the two points, and he just couldn't put the... I'll tell you what, it would have been a hell of a different story if they got the two points and we're talking about him kicking the winning field goal. Everyone would everyone would think that like he's, someone's sprinkled gold dust on. And they've got an over up here. TK's top five. We wrap up the show in the podcast with Tony picking his top five. He's also going to let you know where to put a sly few dollars on the weekend. A good punt, he reckons. Sharks, Storm, Raiders, Cowboys, Dolphins. That's the top five at the moment. So, number five. Yeah, look, I've got to kick the Dolphins out of the top five, Marty, in, in um, this one here. I'm going back to the Broncos. I think sitting in 10th is a bit, a bit of a um, oh, false, false economy as far as their board goes. They're going to jump up there. Uh, sitting in 10th, take a picture of that because it won't be there for long. Number four. Well, you got to you got to talk about the Cowboys, don't you? Like, do they stay there, the Cowboys? Do you think they can, even if they lost? Because they're sitting fourth at the moment. I'm going to give Todd Payton... Well, their next match is against the Panthers, okay? This is the yeah. Panthers coming off a bye, so... I'm going to give Todd Payton an, another week. If they can't beat the Panthers this week, I'm kicking them out. Well, I mean, there are not that many teams do beat the Panthers. I mean, they could you pick pick an easier game for them, huh? No, no, they've won three. I will have to. I'll have to say the Warriors. I have to say the Warriors have to be in the top four. You know, after that on the weekend where they can come back, score twenty two points, and had a drop goal to win it, and Tohu Harris had a chance to win it as well. Um, to get the one point, the only problem I do when I look at that that leaderboard, though, Marty, if you have a look, there's five. Is that five teams underneath them with six points? Yep, that's yep. what one point can do to you. You know what I mean? It can throw you further down the ladder if you if you let those teams below you. And they're not not bad teams. The Roosters, the Broncos, the Eels. Oh, you'd have to say the Dragons Tigers was a pretty much of an average game, but those other three, you, you'd think that they'd be up there somewhere, wouldn't you? So just before we even get into the top two, you look at the bottom five at the moment. Dragons, Knights, Dogs, Titans and Rabbits. That bottom five could just about stay the bottom five for the whole season, couldn't it? Well, Who's I, getting out of there? Maybe, I mean, you're going to, have to say the Knights are going to get out of there and they're going to do what they did last year. Well, I think one of those four teams will, out of the Knights, Bulldogs, Titans and Rabbits, I think I think one of those four teams is going to go on a run. Yeah. Three. Well, I'm going to give it to the Raiders. Yep, I think they sit. Where they sit. I um, think they're sitting there and they're sitting pretty at the moment. Ricky Stewart, he's actually got answers on and off the football field. And I, love, I love just the way he carries that passion around with the green machine down there in Canberra. Um, and they're playing some really good football. I'll tell you what I do like about them, the speed. they got some speed, you know. And, of course, I love Joe Tarpany. I think he's probably the best front row in the country. Number two. Number two. Oh, I'm, and I'm going to reverse this. I'm going to go to the Sharks. You're gonna you're gonna have the Panthers in your top yeah because you're gonna put Melbourne up the top there. Are you gonna have, not have the Panthers in your top five? Teams? We are the Panthers. Well, they, they, they just had a buy. They're in sixth at the moment. So they, how can I put them in the? Yeah, so they because they went out and partied and Taylor May went fast in a car. I'm gonna put them in the top two. Okay. Well, right, you got the Sharks. We see it right at the who's sleeping on them. They've won four games. The game they lost was to the, to the Tigers that they should never have lost. And I think the Tigers will get a few games. Like, Benji's right. It was probably their worst performance against the Dragons yesterday. Uh, again, you're talking about Zach Lomax sitting out there on wing. If, you know, if he didn't play the game, they don't get that one. 
the Dragons. You know, he, he's jumping. We're talking about wingers jumping for balls in there. He was outstanding last night. But, um, yeah, look, I, I think the Sharks deserve to be up there. You know, they're, t- they're turning in some, some performances. Um, but, yeah, they'll sit second. I think the other team that is, is probably the one that we want to look at. because of- Number one. I still don't think they've hit the top form yet, even with that spine. A sp- Big Nelson. I know there's talk about trying to sell Nelson, but I think when he comes back, they get a bit more size again. It releases the players at the back. I think Pippenhausen goes goes on a, on a, a so try Melbourne's still spread. your number one team. How long can they keep Munster with an injury? Does he play all season like that or not? It's tough. It's absolutely tough. The way he played on the weekend, I was really surprised. Like I've I've had that exact same injury. And it's tough running around and doing the way that he does that stop starting all the time and not I'd, I'd be surprised if he trains during the week, you know? But He's, he, he knows how to play with pain, and he, if he plays anything like he did uh, last week for the rest of the year, they're, they're there with a the shout. We've got some random questions we're going to finish off. Happy Coruscant, is that the pass of the competition so far? I thought Wade Egan's little dummy was, but Coruscant. The way they played it with the camera from behind, you know, because you didn't really pick it up from the front. But this the was way, yesterday, the West Tigers were Yeah, the way that he looked at the sweep running around the back and picked up the big front rower, I like, what was he, two metres off the line? You see now how big that... No, they, what a man! What a giant of a man the front rower is. Yeah. Um, where did I? No one's going to stop him. There was there was Uzen Uzen Health, I think, that tried to stop him. Toika Manu, I think his name is. Yeah. Was, was the yeah. guy, and he played. I think he played one State of Origin game last so year. So what he did was he he he's looking, he's looking that way and passes it this way. It's just brilliant, isn't it? Oh, it's a fa- it's a head fake. E- Egan's been doing it quite well out of dummy half this year, but up at Cur- um, Curacao, the way that he threw that pass by looking at the sweeper, he just fooled everyone. Even the commentators. Joey Manu, let's go back to that because we didn't have time to cover that. James Graham says he's the best player in the competition. Somebody's going to come and pay him a whole lot of money. So who are the best players in the competition? Give me a, a couple alongside Manu. Well, they say Joey Manu because of the, the amount of... I think it's, he holds the record after the week. And you've got to think about that. Tedesco's the best fullback in the competition. Australian Does fullback. Does he even know he's playing the competition? Well, I know. <laughs> he got Joey Manu goes back there and smashes records, you know. <laughs> Well, he's he's something out of out of the book, Joe Money. When he, I think, at the moment, he could go to rugby union or go um, anywhere and get what he wants. Other players, I think, that are, um, are really stand out of the competition. I think Sean Johnson's right up there this year. You know, when you're talking about 35 year old halfbacks, you talk Daly Cherry Evans and Reynolds. Well, Reynolds is sitting tenth, and Daly Cherry Evans. I think Maddie's right, and he's just trying to get the wheels going on this manly side. And they look like they're finals football bound, but then they turn on a. a, a a terrible performance of, um, the following week. With Whereas Johnson, he hasn't played a bad game since the beginning of last year. No, that's exactly right. It's, yeah, when you, when you track it back to then, it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's mind blowing. The Titans haven't won a game. I asked a question right at the start of this: Are they going to win a game? They played five. They've lost five. Yeah, they lost in Golden Point. I don't know if a team's ever gone through over in sixteen like the Detroit Lions did in the NFL. But they must be. I mean, they'll be. How many do you think they're going to win? Honestly, three. Because they'll get three buys. <laughs> they'll get six points. Yeah. Yeah. So they're not going to go in with a big, big, you know, round donut. Um, I think they'll, I think they'll win half a dozen games. I think they, they, they're just trying to find their way at the moment. There's some, you know, big losing big Tino is a big loss for them. They're captain. Uh, but they've still got plenty of class there. They should have got the one on the weekend. But couldn't get it. And I think Desi will get a couple. I think he knows how to get a couple of wins from them. Where to punt this weekend? I'll tell you what. And I've been waiting for this bet. I think you bet against the Dolphins this week. I reckon the Eels, you ju- you take them at home, all right, at that stadium out west, and I think you take them 13 plus $2.80. So you get three bucks, mate. The man just set up the try. That was the Rugby League Hour. Brought to you by Microbio Solutions Limited. Solving environmental issues using green technologies. Visit microbio.co.nz. It's that-